Now, as we know, we've been seeing retail implode on itself and more and more stores, they are shutting down and laying off a lot of individuals. Now, coming up very soon this Friday, the Department of Commerce will report August retail sales. Now, remember, we've had Hurricane Harvey, we've had Hurricane Irma, and they're going to use the hurricanes to explain away why the retail sales aren't doing well because we're already getting information from Bank of America from the internal credit and debit card spending data that, well, the retail numbers, they don't look that great. Now, Bank of America's uh, calculation of retail sales using their credit and debit information shows that the month-on-month -month retail sales, they have declined by 0.1%. Now, once again, we need to understand how they figure out retail sales. These are not the numbers coming from the actual retailers, especially those that are closing down. Those retailers that are closing down, they spread out those numbers over the rest of the year. So if stores close down today, they take those sales and they spread it out over the next coming uh, months to make it look like everything is stable. But what we're seeing right now is if you subtract, you know, the hurricanes, and this has only happened in certain locations, it didn't happen in the rest of the country, it only happened in Texas and Florida, and they're going to make this a really big deal to explain away why this is all happening. Now, when we look at this, we can see that the real problem is that people are not spending money like they used to. And what's even more disappointing is that the back to school sales, well, they have dropped. Last year, they were around 5.4%. This year, they're down to 2.4% year on year. So this is down by 50%. And basically what we're seeing here is that this is a major problem because they look at this information, the back to school sales, and they project out how the rest of the year is going to how the rest of the year is going to go and right now what we're seeing the rest of the year is not going to be going that well and they can blame this on the weather they like to do this they like to say well it was the storm's fault it was because of this but when we really look at this we could see that even in june in july august sales were down because people weren't spending actually things started to stall and yes, will they pick up in the coming months? Yes, because we're heading into the holiday season. We're heading into Halloween. We head back to school, but they're not going to be as strong as they were before. We've seen this pattern before in the past years. And this pattern is continuing. This is why we see a lot of the brick and mortar stores closing. Remember, online sales only make up 10% of retail sales so they can't use retail as the excuse they can't use weather as the excuse they don't like to point to the economy or that people don't have the funds to go out and purchase goods they like to point at everything else except that that is the major problem and again most of the people's credit cards they are maxed out and they are just not spending now, Jim Rickards is out there and he's saying that the next financial crisis is around six to eight months away. And he's saying that North Korea might be a trigger point. And he's saying that, yes, we're going to be entering into a financial crisis in this time period. Now, again, this is a prediction. I don't like to use predictions I don't like to say, yes, this is going to happen on this day. Yes, there's a lot of people out there saying that, you know, this is when it's going to happen. It's going to happen in the fall. It's going to happen in 2018. I like to look at the indicators and I like to look at what has been happening over a period of time. Now, a lot of people think that I'm predicting stuff, but I've never predicted anything. I said, this is what I think might happen from all the indicators, but I'm not predicting exactly what's going to happen because we don't know exactly when it's going to happen but we can follow the patterns and we can see that we're getting closer and closer. We can see how the central banks are losing control. We can see how the economy is deteriorating. I mean, if you go back a couple of reports, maybe a year or two ago, we talked about housing, we talked about retail. We've seen retail continually slide. Now we talked about 
the employment numbers. Now think about this for a second. Back after the Great Recession, back in 2009, 2010, 2011, unemployment was around 10%. I mean, that was the government unemployment numbers. We know it was much, much higher. And they said it's been dropping ever since, you know, 8%, 7%, 6%. Here we are at 4%. As these numbers dropped and more people went to work, retail, well, that got worse. Housing got worse. GDP went nowhere. Tax receipts coming into the government declined. Revenues coming into the corporations, their sales, their revenues declined. This tells us that those numbers were manipulated. It tells us that they've been lying to us. And the things that we looked at where retail was getting worse and worse every single holiday season, we said, listen, if this holds true with what we're looking at, we're going to see a lot more stores close. And it did come true after 2016 going into 2017 all of a sudden there were thousands and thousands of stores that were declaring bankruptcy they were closing down laying off people and now we have different cycle analysts saying you know something this fall something's going to happen other people are saying 2018 they're putting time frames um, between you know three months six months eight months because what is happening right now is that the central banks they are losing control They've been pumping the economy with stimulus. Now, none of this has been getting to the people. This has been going to the banks. It's been going to the stock market. It's been going to the housing industry. It's been going everywhere except to the people. So the people aren't really seeing the benefit of what has been happening. Now, if they're in the stock market, they've been riding the stock market higher. But those people that have been losing their jobs, well, they're really not seeing a benefit because they have no jobs. Now, everyone was seeing a benefit right up to 2008 the market was going up everyone had their pensions auto sales were fantastic housing sales were incredible and then all of a sudden everything came to a screeching halt well we're going to see see the same exact thing because what has been happening we've been seeing and we've been looking at all the economic indicators they're equal to or worse than 2008 now city is out there and they're calculating odds of the market correcting and they're saying that this is going to happen most likely in the next three months and they went on to say that yesterday was a historic day for the s p 500 not only did the index close at a new record high but it was also 269 percent higher than its generational lows of March 2009, surpassing the 266% increase during the 1949 to 1956 bull market. Now, Citi has released an analysis looking at these two variables and notes that while many economic indicators are poor, and many of them are poor predictors of corrections, there are a handful of reliable signals to keep an eye on, starting with the why. The bank writes that there are two things that precede most corrections, topish valuations and warning earnings growth, especially as they impact credit, of which both are amply present currently. Now, as a reminder, central banks are pulling the plug as we speak. They're basically tapering their stimulus. This is what they've been telling us. If they actually do it, guess what happens? the whole thing completely falls apart. And they're saying that once this does occur, well, the odds of a correction in the next three months have now risen to 45%. Now, remember, the central bank is manipulating the economy. They've been pumping stimulus into the economy, the ECB, the Fed. They've all been doing this. They've been keeping the interest rates very, very low. If they stop this, it comes to a screeching halt. If they continue on their track, well, people are going to start to realize, and they've already started to realize because we're seeing a lot of financial institutions come out and say, we are in trouble. We have the central bank of central banks saying that, yeah, this looks more dangerous than 2007. We have uh, Bank of America, Citibank. We have Steve St. Angelo all out there saying that we are in the path of something major to occur. We also have cycle analysts saying that we have a major event coming. Martin Armstrong, Charles Nenner, um, and many others are out there saying that something 
is coming. Now, when is this coming? We don't know exactly, but we've been following everything. I mean, I'm talking about the BRICS. We've been talking about China, the yuan um, backed oil futures backed by gold. We're talking about Russia developing their payment system, China developing their payment system. We're talking about many countries dealing outside of the dollar and other banks making deals and bilateral trade agreements to deal in their own currencies. We see the Belt and Road building up. So when we take all of this and we put it all together, we're starting to see this picture of what's really happening. Now, it started out very, very slowly when we started reporting on this and many people said, oh, this is never going to happen. The yuan is never going to be included in the uh, basket of SDRs. That's not going to happen. Russia is not going to make their own payment system. And all of this has come true. They're all doing the things that we thought and everything is moving from the West to the East. And we all believed and we all thought and we all looked at the indicators of how these countries are moving away from the dollar. And that has come true because many of the countries right now, they're just not dealing in the dollar. So when we start to put all this together and we start to look at what's happening here, we can see there's a clear picture that everything is being prepped for this system to come down. And this is what we're looking at. And a lot of financial institutions are saying we're either three months or eight months away. So we're in this time frame where something major could happen. I mean, think about it. Going back to 2008, when Bernanke was out there saying, listen, we're not forecasting a recession anytime soon. And in that same year, when the market was at its all-time high, when housing was doing incredible, people were even purchasing more homes than ever before. People owned two, three, four homes. The automobile industry said sales are fantastic. Everything came to a screeching halt. Credit froze. There were bailouts that were needed. I mean, everything was kept behind the scenes, but then but then everything started to come out like AIG needed a bailout. Bank of America needed a bailout. Citibank needed a bailout. The, autom the automobile industry was a complete and utter disaster. And if they didn't get a bailout, they would be completely bankrupt and there would be no U.S. auto manufacturers. So what we're seeing here is basically the same thing where everything's being kept in the dark we've been following all these economic indicators we know the economy is deteriorating very very quickly and all these financial institutions many there are many financial pundits out there and all the alternative media saying that yes we are headed to a point of no return and guess what it's just 